Hey everyone, Jay Carpenter from Fahrenheit Advisors here and joined by a special guest. Uh, if you've been around uh, the Richmond business scene last few years, you've seen her in uh, Richmond Times, you've seen her in uh, Paul's article in Grid, you've seen uh, BizSense and Inno and uh, Ms. Paige Wilson from Neighbor Force, founder, CEO. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm doing great, Jay. Hope you are. I am hanging in there and, and yeah, appreciate your time and You've, you've told the story, but I thought it'd be great to get, um, educate folks on, on what you're doing with Neighbor Force and get them up to speed since March, how you've changed and adapted. So maybe give us kind of an outline of, of your business over the uh, last couple of years and then where we are today. Sure. Uh, maybe just kind of a quick overview of what we do because um, we're, you know, we say we're disrupting the front end of the care continuum, but um, through experience I had with my own mother when she started aging, I found there were all these little things that I did for her, um, you know, nothing medical, but I was trying to raise my daughter and balance my career. I was in investment banking at the time. So it was very stressful. And I just kept thinking, I need a resource. You know, I'd like to push a button and a trusted person shows up. She didn't need an aide or a nurse and she didn't even want that. She would have fought that because that's not what she needed. Um, you know, it was all that little stuff, the call, my remote's not working, those kind of things that we do for our parents. So um, cut the story short, basically um, after she passed away, I started doing a lot of research and had no idea. I was living it about the silver tsunami of baby boomers aging 10,000 a day, every day for the next 10 years and families shrinking and moving away. So that whole sandwich generation uh, was creating all of this. It's family is your first line of support as you start to slow down a little bit in your older age. So. Um, as I went through that, I came up with a solution, which is really like Uber of help for your parents. So it's neighbor force. And what we do is we pair a lot of empty nesters and retirees in the community who are looking for just a little bit of connection and purpose. Maybe their kids have gone to college. Um, you know, they're craving being around folks. They don't want to go back to their career. They love the flexibility of something like an Uber. Um, but it's way better. So we're connecting them with, you know, uh, folks in their 80s, 90s, you know, our parents or grandparents in your case, probably. But, um, and it's simple. They have an app. It's one hour at a time. The neighbors, that's the helpers, um, are called neighbors. You know, on average, they're working four to eight hours a week. So it's very gig based and the clients love it. And it's all about connection in person. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, March really um, did a number on neighbor force. We had been growing double digit month over month for since we launched in the fall of 18. So almost 16, almost 18 months, uh, month over month growth. We'd opened in a second market. We were getting ready to launch in two more markets in the spring. Um, we were getting ready to raise a second round of capital because the goal is to scale. We put our technology, we built our own platform had all of that in place and then COVID. So in March, we obviously immediately had to make a lot of changes. We suspended in-person visits immediately in mid-March. We moved to virtual visits, checking on people by the phone, doing contact less visits, maybe getting their groceries for them, leaving it on the front store step. We also launched a community campaign called Kindness Graham, which was really enlisting anybody in the community that might have an older person near them or somebody at risk by offering to do things for them because we couldn't reach everybody. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that was heartbreaking. We knew the clients really needed us, but we, until people understood how the virus was, was introduced and transmitted, we really, really couldn't do that. So our, um, from a business standpoint, since we're a startup, cash is king and the goal is to survive. Um, we immediately cut staff, cut expenses, reduced our salaries, you know, by half, um, and, and came up with our default live model to see, make sure we could make our way through this. Um, and we can, uh, and then in April, so a full month after, you know, half of March, our revenue was down 87% over February. So that was pretty tough, but we were ready for it. Now, in June, we started resuming in-person visits. Um, we had clients calling us. They had put off doctor's appointments. They needed help around their home. So we put together a bunch of safety protocols. Um, and now we're back in visiting clients in the home. Some are ready for it. 
others are not. You know, everybody has their own risk factors and things that are going on. Uh, so our revenue is actually coming back quicker than we have projected. So um, we'll see. Obviously, I think um, it's going to be a mumpy road for at least another year or two. Um, what we find with our clients is some of them will say, you know, if somebody told me I could sit still for 60 days, stay isolated, and then I could resume my life, I could do that. But it could be one to two years, and I'm 89. I got to live my life, you know, and not all of them are in that view. So that's kind of where we are. And in terms of the long term view, so we've started bringing staff back already to support this. And the long view really is we already knew all of the demographics were so strong in our favor with the aging of America and the shrinking number of family caregivers and the sandwich generation and all of those things. And there's lots of technology coming along and a lot of that's been accelerated because of COVID. Um, but we already knew that people still crave human connection. And that's really, even though we were helping with things, it was really the connection. So what we've seen with COVID is, used to be they would say nine out of 10 people want to age in their home. They don't want to go to a senior living facility. Well, I think that's now 9.9 .9 out of 10. Nobody wants to move to a senior living facility and we can help them stay independent. So once we get through COVID, that's even stronger. And then the other piece of it, as I mentioned, is this whole idea of isolation and loneliness. And we knew and the healthcare world knew that it takes a toll on people's health. They say it's equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow. Um, now the whole world knows it. We've all felt it. So the whole information thing, absolutely. Um, we've got to get through this. So yeah, we're hanging in there. Well, I appreciate you sharing and, and glad to hear things are on the men. You talk about the, the loneliness and, and this time last year, we would have done this at, at Urban Farmhouse or, or you know, at a coffee shop. So are your uh, typical clientele, are they able to adapt to some of the technology? Have you been able to do some virtual type of, uh, obviously it's not the same, I'm the first right. to, to attest to that, uh, but just in terms of some of the connectivity and, and being able to interact, have you been able to adapt to some of that? Yeah, so we've done some virtual things, um, but it's funny, just like we were talking beforehand, you know, the world of Zoom meetings, it's just not the same. Um, and, you know, we've got clients where we're just helping them. They've got a bad back, fold the laundry and make a meal. Maybe their eyesight's bad. Can't do that virtually, unfortunately. Um, and those are things that have to get done. Um, but some of them, we also help them with technology and we've been doing that all along. Um, it, sometimes it's a lot better to have a neighbor come and help your parents because they're going to be more patient <laughs> than right. you will be with your parents not understanding how to do Facebook. So we do that, or like uh, we have one client, we introduced them to Amazon. And it's funny, every time we showed up, there was another smiley box on the front porch. Um, and we're, we've offered with some clients and done it a few times now, telehealth. Obviously that keeps you know an older person safer than having to go to the doctors. But if they don't have a computer or don't know how to do it, we can come in and help them set it up. So they're getting exposed to the neighbor, but they're not getting exposed to the broad community. And that's helpful. Yeah, and in terms of getting people back in, you said you're back in, are you following any uh, the schedule oh, protocol absolutely. from legislation or, or leadership? Who are you? How are you calculating when you're uh, being able to be more full contact? Yeah, so um, we're kind of letting the client base drive that. Mm -hmm. uh, but on our end, we, have, we had to start with putting some pretty strict safety precautions in place. And the neighbors get it because they're not doing it really for the money, even though they get paid. The last thing they wanna do is expose a high risk person in the community, as opposed to some people maybe that are working full time, some of those frontline folks, minimum wage earners, you know, they might not wanna admit they have a fever. <laughs> they gotta keep their job. So, you know, that helps right off the bat, but we've instituted, you know, they've gotta take their temperature, they've gotta, wear masks and all of those things. And probably the hardest part for us right now, we built, in order to scale, we have to automate this matching of neighbors and clients. And so we have the backbone of our system is the sophisticated algorithm that we've built that does all that matching. Well, now we're having to step in a lot manually, unfortunately, because we'll have a neighbor that was scheduled and then she says, oh, I was somewhere this weekend and somebody tested positive for COVID. So they've got to come off for 14 days. Or, you know, I, 
I don't feel good. I'm probably fine. But again, we've got to keep everybody safe. So we, it's a little bit like a whack-a-mole right now, unfortunately. Whack-a-mole. That's great. Yeah. Well, yeah, tremendous you know, business model and technology combined with, with obviously a phenomenal service. Um, we can learn more at neighborforce.com. Is there anything else uh, we can do to, to help at this point? No, just, you know, spread the word uh, because there's really nothing like us out there. Um, it's hard. People think we're more like an at-home agency, which we're not. Um, but when people need us and they hear about us, our close ratio is about 100%. So Beautiful. Love it. She is Paige Wilson from Neighbor Force. Check her out on neighborforce.com. Um, I'm Jay Carpenter, Fahrenheit Advisors. Everyone stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Jay.